Matt Siddle, one of your investment strategies is to invest in shares which are undervalued but having a high potential to grow. What do you think? What kind of shares do fulfill these conditions at the moment? Well, I think there's a, a range of shares. The areas I find the most ideas are in, uh, in software, in uh, healthcare, and in industrials. Um, all of where I can find ideas where valuations are cheaper than their sectors, but where you're finding good businesses that have got strong long-term growth prospects. Can you name any specific shares? So uh, we talked about the healthcare sector. Roche would be uh, one specific name. Um, it's a, a very strong business, obviously a global leader in oncology and cancer drugs. It's got a very strong pipeline, uh, growing its business with those new product launches, even with the uh, declines in, in older products, and, and trading on very cheap valuations compared to other defensive companies such as Nestle or, or some of the other consumer staples or even other pharmaceuticals companies. So, you know, an attractive combination of, of good growth, strong business and attractive valuation. Any software company? Yeah, so the, uh, the biggest position in software would be a company SAP, um, where you've got very strong top line growth. Uh, the business has invested in new cloud products over the last few years and, and those have seen very strong growth uh, and driven good growth of the business as a whole. Uh, that investment has led margins to decline for, for a few years, but now we've reached the point where they can leverage that, uh, that investment and that scale and see margins rising as well as good top line growth. And the valuation is much cheaper than other software companies like Dassault System or, or Temenos. Uh, and, and therefore, again, a combination of good growth on, a, on an attractive valuation. With your European Growth Fund, you also um, have an eye on Swiss stocks. Uh, you mentioned Roche already. Do you see any promising equities in Switzerland beside Roche? So uh, Roche is uh, by far the, uh, the, the, the biggest position within the fund. Um, I think Nestle is an excellent company and, uh, and, and it does deserve a position uh, within the fund uh, given the growth prospects, given the, uh, the, the refocusing and, uh, and margin progression that I think the company can deliver. Uh, but the recent rise in valuations means that the position size is, is much smaller than the Roche, Roche position. Looking at the European stock market in general, at the beginning of this year we saw a stock rally on the market, but recently the euphoria has decreased, uh, decreased a little. Do you expect a further corrections on the stock markets in the near future? So uh, obviously there's uncertainty uh, around the, uh, the economic environment and particularly with trade wars and some of the politics around it. However, equally, you know, there are policy uh, stimulus. Uh, the Fed has stopped raising rates and there's talk about cutting rates. Uh, money supply has accelerated in various parts of the world. Uh, so, you know, um, there is the possibility of a further correction, but equally there is also the possibility of a policy-led boom. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a wide range of potential outcomes uh, and probably a wider range than is usual, but, uh, but not something that I, I specifically expect a correction. Finally, we have to talk about the trade conflict between USA and China and some other countries. Next week, there's the G20 summit in, in Osaka. What do you think? Will we see any progress in the trade disputes? I, I suspect that um, we, uh, we're unlikely to see a final agreement signed. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, the G20 is often about the, the heads of government talking to the heads of government. And, and, and really, that only comes at the end of an agreement and, and, and the real details are negotiated by their teams below them. So uh, I doubt that Osaka leads to a final trade deal. But, uh, but there are talks going on and, and some positive noises coming out of both camps. So neither do I think that the, um, the, the, the game is over and we're automatically heading into a trade war. Uh, I, I just don't think the G20 is going to be the, the final agreement. Matt Siddle, thank you very much.